Good morning. It is Friday morning, June the 3rd. My name is Joe Haynes. I'm the preaching elder at Beacon Church here on Vancouver Island in BC, Canada. I want to welcome you to this morning devotional. Today we're carrying on looking at the uh, verse Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, and just into the first part of verse 30. As we answer the question we left yesterday, what kingdom or nation or empire was Jesus talking about? Was Jesus predicting that would fall and collapse before his second coming? And so we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's read Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, down through verse 31, and then we'll pray. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Let's pray. Father, we ask for your help to understand these words of Jesus, because we approach this scripture as an act of worship, devoting ourselves to the Son of God who spoke, who prophesied in these scriptures, whose Holy Spirit inspired Matthew to record uh, these words for the sake of your children, that we would understand, that we would know, that we would learn, that we would believe. And so, Father, we pray this morning you would strengthen our faith in your Son, our commitment to devote ourselves to him and to serve him, and, Lord, strengthen our courage and our hope and confidence in him as we wait for his return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. And then Jesus said, and the moon will not give its light. And he said, and the stars will fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. So you see a, 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 a time set up there. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, certain events will begin to happen. Then, after those events, then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. In our last couple of devotionals um, this week, we've seen that, uh, we've learned that Jesus, when he said, after the tribulation of those days, he pointed to a time when the long desolation of the Jewish people would be over. As I explained last week in the background to those words, the desolations of Jerusalem and the desolations of the Isra uh, people of Israel long predicted by Moses himself back in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. But Jesus, when he said after the tribulation of those days, he predicted a time when the Jewish tribulation, the, the tribulation of the Jewish people would be over. As Luke recorded in, in the same prophecy in Luke chapter 21, verse 23 and 24, there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. Remember, Jesus was talking to the people of, of Judah and Jerusalem at that time. And Luke goes on, they will, well, Jesus goes on in Luke chapter 21, verse 23 and 24. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Notice those words, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So when Jerusalem is no longer trampled underfoot by the Gentiles, then this means that then the times of the Gentiles will be over. Likewise, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, when Jesus says the tribulation of those days, that would also be over. Since Jerusalem has been under Jewish control since 1967, I suggest that we are now in that time of those days those days after the, the, the time period after the tribulation of those days. The next thing Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 29, and maybe I should pause and just explain, uh, if you're not familiar with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke have a lot of um, material that is parallel. And so there are parallel accounts. If you don't understand the way Matthew puts something, you can often look it up in Mark or Luke to see how it's described there. And this, is, this prophecy is one of those ones. So that's why I say that Luke's account of the times of the Gentiles is equivalent. It's parallel to Matthew's account of the tribulation of those days. 
Okay, so moving on, what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, as we move on into the verse, he next said, The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And as we've seen this week in these devotionals, when he said that, uh, he was making use of Isaiah 13, verse 10. The same words uh, which he was quoting there, the same words in that prophecy which had predicted the Medo-Persian Empire would overthrow the Babylonian kingdom, which happened you know, uh, in the year 539 BC. And Jesus applies that picture to the fall of another great power in between the end of the times of the Gentiles and his second coming. The next thing Jesus said in verse 29 is the stars will fall from heaven. And here he took another picture from the Old Testament, this time from the total destruction of the Edomite kingdom with all levels of government, as we saw yesterday, all levels of government and institutions collapsing. And to use it again, Jesus uses it again as a picture of something similar happening to some great nation or kingdom before his second coming, after the tribulation of those days. And the next thing Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 is, And the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And here again, Jesus goes back to Isaiah 13, uh, specifically verse 13, where the picture is now of the government and institutions of Babylon being so badly shaken that the city never recovered and, and finally became a ghost town. And Jesus uses that as a picture of something similar happening before his second coming. So what government or what kingdom or what nation is Jesus prophesying will collapse like Babylon and like Edom before he comes again? That is, in between 1967, the end of the times of the Gentiles, and the second coming of Christ. Most of Jesus' prophecy in Matthew chapter 24 uh, in verses 3 all the way down through verse 28, most of the prophecy, most of this chapter is a prophecy leading up to an event that happened in the year 70 AD to the destruction of Jerusalem. But the tribulation of those days, or as Luke has it, the wrath against this people and the times of the Gentiles, it lasted for 19 more centuries. Jesus predicted the destruction of of Jerusalem in great detail because this prophecy that he's recording here, that's recorded here in Matthew 24, is primarily a prophecy. It was primarily a teaching for the people listening to him at that time, for his disciples and those that they would teach at that time. It's a prophecy primarily meant to be remembered and acted on by his followers in Judea and Jerusalem in the first century. Primarily, I said. But to answer the disciples' question back in verse 3, when they, when they asked not only when will these things happen, that is the destruction of the temple Jesus had just predicted in verse 2, but also they added, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus goes on from verse 29 down to explain, to show that the siege of Jerusalem and the beginning of the tribulation of the Jewish people was not the end, but only the beginning a beginning, I guess I should say. He gave very little detail about what the end of the age would look like. Instead, he just draws pictures from the Old Testament, from the fall of Babylon and Edom, as they prophesied in Isaiah. But that's because the end of the age and his second coming was already predicted in greater detail in the book of Daniel, and Jesus himself was going to ensure that this, uh, the end of the age and his second coming would be predicted in still greater detail, better detail, in the book of Revelation. In Daniel chapter 2, for example, a prophecy that existed already when Jesus gave the, these words in Matthew 24, that's where we find an explanation for what Jesus means in Luke 21 about the times of the Gentiles. And Daniel interpreted in chap Daniel chapter 2, Daniel interpreted King Nebuchadnezzar's dream for him and explained that God gave it, God had given him the dream and God had raised up Daniel as a prophet to interpret the dream. And uh, Daniel explains to uh, King Nebuchadnezzar that his kingdom, that is Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, the Babylonian Empire as we call it today, was the first of four Gentile empires 
that Gentile kingdoms that would have dominion, especially over the Jewish people, up until God establishes an everlasting kingdom on the earth. Those four kingdoms were first Babylon, second Medo-Persia, third Greece, and fourth Rome. And in Nebuchadnezzar's dream that Daniel interpreted in Daniel chapter 2, in that dream, these four empires were symbolized as a statue with a head of gold, and the chest and the arms of silver, the belly and thighs of bronze and legs of iron. The iron part symbolized the empire of Rome. But although the Roman Empire, it fell apart in the 5th century AD, uh, you know, so 1500 years ago. Although the Roman Empire fell apart 1,500 years ago, the times of the Gentiles continued. And Daniel explained that, that in the vision where the king saw the feet of, of the statue, the ten toes of that statue were a prediction that the lands of the Roman Empire, as Daniel chapter 2, verses 41 and 42 put it, would be divided into ten kingdoms. So Daniel chapter 2, verse 41 says, And as you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, it shall be a divided kingdom. But some of the firmness of iron shall be in it, just as you saw iron mixed with the soft clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. What we've seen in history is, in fact, that the Roman Empire did collapse. And in, in a nutshell, this is a, a great you know, synopsis of history. The Roman Empire fell, and when it fell, it was replaced. The kingdom, in, an, in a way, endured, but it was divided up into ten pieces. And the, those ten pieces were brittle, and yet there was some glue that held them together. Ten kingdoms. They were held together for a while by the Catholic Church. And today, they are loosely united by the European Union. What's important to notice is that Daniel chapter 2, verse 44 says, and this is a strong prediction, in the days of those kings, the ten kingdoms of Western Europe, in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever. That, my friends, predicts the coming of Christ and his kingdom on the earth. And that statue, symbolizing the four Gentile empires in Daniel chapter 2, and, and the final loosely united ten kingdoms that are the remnants of the Roman Empire, that statue corresponds to the times of the Gentile Je Gentiles that Jesus talked about in Luke 21 verse 24. Daniel interpreted that dream for Nebuchadnezzar in the year 604 BC. And from then until Israel reclaimed uh, Jerusalem in 1967, fulfilling Jesus' prophecy in Luke 21, 24, that was 2,570 years, the times of the Gentiles. So I believe that when Jesus predicted that after the times of the Gentiles, it, or after 1967, or after the tribulation of those days, a great kingdom would collapse and fall like Babylon and Edom, that Jesus was predicting the collapse and the ruin of the ten kingdoms of Western Europe, most of the original members of the European Union, the ten nation leftovers of the Roman Empire. And those lands, once ruled by Rome, in Western Europe are today. Spain and Portugal and France and Britain and Austria and Italy and Luxembourg and Switzerland and Belgium and the Netherlands. So, we live in a scary year, don't we? 2020. But if in our lifetime we see in the news reports of frightening upheaval in Western Europe, a change of things like, like we've never seen before, a collapse and a ruin of countries that have stood for so long. Should we be alarmed or should we be afraid? No. Second Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 1 
is a call and an urgent appeal by the apostle to to not be alarmed or shaken by the things that we see or hear because we hope in the word of Christ himself we hope in him and we trust the word he has spoken so here's a verse to memorize Matthew chapter 24 verse 25 see i have told you beforehand what a great verse see i have told you beforehand you know our interpretations could be wrong here and there uh, we could be could be mostly right but partly wrong or we could be all wrong, uh, mostly wrong as far as we know but we trust not our interpretations we trust the word which is why we study that's a great verse matthew 24 verse 25 i, I recommend you memorize it see i have told you beforehand and here's another one that we should memorize from verse 35, Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So what should we do? I think we should hold tightly to the word of Christ, the words of Jesus. I think we should pray for his gospel to go forward, to advance, to race ahead, as, as Paul puts it in 2 Thessalonians three to to advance and bring many to salvation while there is still time i think that as we wait for christ to come we should be people who study the word and love the word and who pray but also we seek to live our lives in a way that serves jesus well during the time that we have to use every moment and make it count for his glory I think while we wait and while we live out our lives of holiness and godliness, serving our King, we do it in the service of Jesus while we wait for him. We do it to serve Jesus and by our service to honor and worship him. Because his next words in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, words that we'll look at next week, then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. Let's pray. Father, I ask you for your wisdom from your Holy Spirit to fill our hearts and minds now to keep us steady. I ask that as we respond to Jesus' predictions and prophecies here in this chapter, I, I ask that our response would be one of confidence, of settled trust, of contentment, of courage and endurance, that Lord, today you would remind us, because of the words of Jesus Christ, you would remind us to fight against sin in our own hearts and lives, and to live in a way that serves and honors Jesus now, while we wait, being useful for his kingdom, useful for his glory, and expectant, anticipating, looking forward to his return, but not content to let the time be wasted. Lord, would you help us to redeem the days? In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining me uh, this week for these devotionals. I'll be back next Tuesday with another devotional carrying on in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Uh, before then, I invite you to join us tomorrow for our uh, Saturday discussion, Theology for Breakfast at 9 a.m. here on YouTube Live. Um, and it's going to be a look at another chapter in John Piper's Coronavirus and Christ. And you can see the details on YouTube. Look under Live Events and you'll see that there. If you're watching this video on Facebook and you don't uh, know how to get to our YouTube channel for Beacon Church, just go to bcchurch.ca and look down at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and you'll see a bunch of little icons there representing our social media links. One of those will be a little red YouTube icon and you can click that to go to our YouTube page. There you'll find our live video scheduled for 9 a.m. Saturday morning for Theology for Breakfast. And then, of course, join us Sunday morning at 10.30 uh, at bcchurch.ca slash live for our church worship service for Beacon Church, a song time, uh, uh, instruction from one of our elders, and then uh, I'll be preaching beginning in Revelation chapter 17 this week, carrying on in our sermon series. Until then, God bless you.